is going to help a little bit, actually. Hi, you guys. Good morning. Welcome to a new weekly vlog. I am currently getting gas. It is 7.20, I think. So I'm a little early to work. So I got some gas. My hair, let me tell you what. It never looks good right after I've done it. And it doesn't look ever as good on camera. But it looked good this morning, okay? Just believe me. So, gas is a pumping. Yeah, I got a coffee. Because it's Monday. Monday and Thursdays, brother. Maybe Fridays. Instead of Thursdays. I don't know. Because Thursday is like... Well, actually, we don't have work on Friday. Because it's good for Friday. So, that's nice. Ew, why is there a van next to me? In all these spots, you had to go there. Police. Um, but I finished The Warm Hands of Ghosts last night. We will be discussing that when I get home. Because when I tell you I have a new favorite book, I have a new favorite book. That book was six stars. Oh my god. I'm getting the Fairy Loot Edition when it drops this week. I am obsessed. Actually, I think the Fairy Loot Edition comes out today. Let me go check that. Because I need it. it that book was That book was beautiful. That book was heartbreaking. It was so good. Oh, we will discuss. We will discuss, but let me finish this gas and like go to my job. You guys, I was just minding my little business. I just got home from getting our Monday Chipotle. I was just gonna do a little cleaning because old man Jake had a little bit of an accident, which is okay. He actually, since we have moved in here, had not had any accidents at all in this house. So he had the first one. I think that maybe what happened is we usually let him out Oh, hey, welcome to the vlog. We usually let him out first thing in the morning and then feed him and all that stuff because it's so early in the morning. Sometimes he doesn't want to eat, uh, but we're on, fully on the early feeding schedule, so he's good. Um, and I think maybe we just did not let him out because I'm trying to remember and I can't remember, uh, but we just probably didn't let him out again after that. And usually we do just as like a caution, but... To be honest, he's never really needed it and he usually is reluctant for it. So I wonder if maybe he went out the first time and knew he was getting breakfast and didn't go. Like just waited at the porch, you know, we didn't notice because we're moving around the house. So anyways, cleaned that up with this freaking carpet cleaner. Y'all, I swear by it. It's the Bissell carpet cleaner. And let me show you the exact uh, solution that I get. I'll link it again because I'm obsessed. I got my stepsister this for her, um, like one of the wedding gifts I got her off of her, what is that called, a registry. This is the exact one that we get and it is perfect. That right there is the model that we have. But if you care, I will link it because I know the first time I mentioned it, I think I forgot to link it and one of y'all was like, uh, hello. I'm gonna need that. So there's that. Um, but I was watching the last night's episode of Potomac, which is, honestly, this season is so boring. It is pitiful. But this last episode is like, it's not making up for the entire season, but it's a good last episode. This is like an eight, if not a nine out of 10 episode. But then I think it's over because they do that cute little, this is what they're doing now, whatever moment, the last finale, and then they preview the reunion. But no, Miss Mia and Gordon are getting divorced. And all of this that's happening 
I'm like, and you know what? Sometimes things happen on the show and you know, you're like, I know a lot of people are thinking this about Kyle and Mauricio. They're like, why is he talking about it publicly? Da, da, da. But y'all didn't say anything about it when she was. And we, hey, by the way, we don't know these people. <laughs> so we don't actually know what happened. And so when you're side siding with someone that you don't know and you don't know the actual situation, it, it's not that serious. It is not a sports that we don't need to play teams. It's not that serious. Uh, but Gordon, oh, he is on camera time. He said, mic me up. I have things to say. I am both gagged and gooped at what I am hearing right now. I'm just like, Gordon. But then what happened? <laughs> like, he is just full on airing it out. It is crazy. I was watching Kempire and I think it's Brooke Ashley he had on that were, they were talking about it and they said like the last 15 minutes were crazy town. So I paused it thinking, hmm, okay, let me watch it before I hear them talk about it. Thank God I did that. Cause this is, this is so much, so much is happening. Anyways, I was cleaning the carpets while listening to it and it was boring. I was like, nah, nah. And then I was doing a little bit of vacuuming and our vacuum officially died. So I did get a new one and she's right there in the hallway. Hmm. I'm gonna wait till Friday when I'm home to like break it out and everything, but I am so freaking excited. So excited. Uh, but I, I was vacuuming and I heard this start happening and I was like, I need my people. Where are my people? Let's talk. So I guess while we're here, I can run through really quick. Um, Yes, my six star read that I mentioned on Instagram, which a lot of people messaged me about, was The Warm Hands of Ghosts by, is it Catherine Arden? I did order the Fairy Loot Edition. I got my little hands on it. I was so excited. I've always been so nosy about how many people are buying the Fairy Loot books. Like, I want to know how many units they order so bad. I'm so nosy. But when I got in line, there were like upwards of 500, almost 600 people in line in the queue because now it tells you the number of people and where your queue spot is. So, and that's only the people that are in front of me. I have no idea who's behind me. I'm just like, let's see. I think it was $40 for my copy. So if it was 570, oh my God, they would have made at least 23 grand from the number I saw if everyone purchased one. That's crazy. Fairy loot's making money. Fix those edges. Just kidding. Don't be mean to the artist guys. Okay. So I am now currently reading The Heiress. Um, I need to still process my feelings on the warm hands of ghosts because that was just, that was genuinely one of the best books I've ever read. It was just so heartbreaking in such a amazing like do it again way. And like thematically, tonally, all, all of the things that happened, I was just like, there's no other way this book could have gone. That's my main critique with books. Sometimes I'm like, mm, could have done that better. Mm, I know I'm not an author and I know I have no skill, but like you could have done that better. <laughs> but this one, no notes. I have nothing to say about it. And listen, this is this comparison I'm about to make has no, it doesn't make any sense. And there are haters. There are haters among us, okay? So y'all listen and listen good and don't listen to those haters. And if you're a hater yourself, be quiet. <laughs> Just you know, um, this gave me the same feeling as I was reading the Starless Sea, where I was just like, I would be happy if this never ended. I just want to keep reading this book. Like, this is phenomenal. And it's that thing of, I don't know if I could ever reread this book. I don't know if it would ever be as good of a read. Not because it's not as good of a book. I think it would be its own read to reread the Starless Sea or the Warm Hands of Ghosts. But I think like there's something about reading for the first time. I was so nervous and anxious what was going to happen to these characters. I, this book was barely over 300 pages and I was so on the edge of my seat worried about them and wanting things for them and all these things that were happening. I was like, oh my God. And this is like back burner stuff, but there are, there's every kind of storyline you can think of. There are two love stories in this that were just, like, oh my God, this is just so cute. 
One of them had very Veronica and Stoker energy. And if you've read the book, you probably know who I'm referring to. And then I don't even know how I describe the other one, but it was just, this whole book was just beautiful. Like I, that's what I'm saying is I don't even know how to process this because I loved it so much that I really don't have any critiques to make on it. I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was so well thought out, plotted. I thought the pacing was phenomenal. I thought that even the weird dreamy sequences that we got with a certain character that's involved, they weren't the kind that were, they lost themselves in it. Like, like the book lost itself in it. It was so purposeful. Every single, it felt like every single word had a purpose. There was nothing extra in it. It was just so good. It was so good. Oh my God, it was so good. <laughs> and I just really, I just highly recommend it. It was phenomenal. It is a Gothic historical fiction that is gonna hurt you. And those last two chapters are gonna put you back together. I don't know what else to tell you. It is beautiful. It's a love story to life and loss. That's all I can say. <laughs> but now I'm back to the slicing and dicing cause I don't wanna cry again. Ew. Um, this one is crazy, crazy town. It's crazy how long it's taking to like get to the point. <laughs> so this is 279 pages and I'm on page 104. And I will say, despite the fact that it does feel like it's taking forever to get to a point or whatever, um, Rachel Hawkins can write a very addictive thriller. Now, the villa, Flaptina, didn't like that. Um, that was not my favorite of hers. I would recommend that the least. The Wife Upstairs, I thought was good. Don't look up the book that it's likened to though, because that's a huge spoiler, like, please. And then Reckless Girls, I have not read yet, but it's a summer book and I wanna read it this summer. So what do you think about that? Um, but in this one, we have an elusive heiress who was kidnapped when she was three and then some months later, she was returned because they didn't like her. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but she did get returned. They found her again. It was like, you're coming home with me for real this time. And then we're kind of following her stories through letters, which I love, and through newspaper clippings, which I think is, I love multimedia books. And then in the current timeline, we are following her heir and his wife moving or not moving but driving across from Colorado to North Carolina which is making me think of the Murdoch's uh not gonna lie to you those accents they're stuck in my brain okay they are stuck in my brain but uh, that's pretty much it they just got to the house and I guess things are gonna happen I don't know we're having those little bit of moments where it's dual POV between the husband and the wife and then like interjections from Miss Ruby, who is the heiress who has left all of this to the husband. And there's been a few instances of the wife being like, but he doesn't know everything or da -da -da. So obviously they're keeping secrets or whatever, but that's really all I know up to this point so far. Um, what I will say uh, what this book is giving me the feeling of with the letters the heiress Ruby left to her heir because I don't know what technical relation because he's adopted that's said in the thing um, but his name's Cam we'll just say that the letters that Ruby has left to Cam we are getting to read uh, before she passed and it very much has that feeling of Evelyn Hugo if it, Evelyn Hugo was like a slasher thriller. And honestly, I'm here for it. It is, it's, she's like an elusive, super ultra rich woman who just like, it's all four of her husbands ended up dead around her. What's going on there? Uh, we're gonna find out probably. So I, I've already found out a little bit. We've, we've got hints, but I'm not gonna say anything. But it, it is very much giving me like, Evelyn Hugo, what's Evelyn doing? <laughs> kind of vibe so far, but I don't think, even though I feel as though I've read a third, over a third of this, I'm like, what's going on guys? So we'll see, I'm gonna get back with 
Gordon, who's like losing it, understandably, and um, eat my Chipotle. Okay, okay. y'all new angle same me library book day um okay so i got a text that i have seven books from the library whoops um we'll go over the books that i've read first since we last talked i have packages who are you mcmillan it's probably a thriller Love that. Um, speaking of, I just finished The Heiress today at work. I gave this a four star. I really liked this. It was a fun time. It is very much Rachel Hawkins. If y'all like her books, you're gonna enjoy it. If you don't tend to like her books, it's like the same thing. Jake is doing something outside and what is it? He is eating the grass that I tried to plant for Annabeth. Love that. Um, he loves to just, he picks it up and then spits it out. And literally I've been told it's just him being difficult. <laughs> True. Anyways, I don't have a whole lot to say about this because it was very much just a very fast, very fun. It was just shy of 300 pages thriller. Enjoyed it. Good time. Do recommend and Rachel Hawkins is my go-to recommendation author, one of them. If you're new to thrillers, I would say do The Wife Upstairs first. And then what was her other one? Oh, I don't recommend The Villa. Actually, no. But this one and The Wife Upstairs, very good. And I still need to read her other one. But that one has more, I started it and it has way more of a summer vibe. And I'm going to save that for, um, how do you say summer? I did start The Coworker right after, and I got a whopping 19 pages in, but this is going to be what I read tonight, so let me put that on my little nightstand. I don't know why I'm in such a thriller mood, but I am. They are fast reads. I think it might just be like I'm in the mood to be running through books, and that's what I'm doing. Speaking of, though, one of y'all recommended me this, To Have and To Heist, so I grabbed it from the library. And then this one, I think is a historical, yeah, when a Victorian apothecary hires a stoic private investigator. I got stoker Veronica vibes from this, and it's called The Love Remedy. It is, I believe, a historical romance, and I want to read it. Look at the cover. It's so cute. So we're going to read it, and we're going to live off love. Then I was in the mood for one of my, like, Modern Royals books, so I grabbed the next one in the American Royals series. Highly recommend. It's essentially if America had a monarchy instead of a president. Then I got the Invocations. This one I put on hold because it was supposed to be ordered and not come for a while, and then they were like, hey, it's here. And I was like, hey, what? Hey, huh? Hey, and for um, the haters out there, no, I haven't hit my library hold loan list number that I'm, uh, I limit. There's no limitations for me. Just kidding. There are, but I'm not there yet. I think it's a hundred, so. Mm. Then I got Arch Enemies. This is the sequel to Renegades uh, by Marissa Meyer. It is a superhero book. It's very much to me if the boys was child friendly <laughs> but one of the characters she is infiltrating the hero's little squad of this world and now this is book two and I don't know what's gonna happen but for my booktubers control my TBR video I had three books and I realized I didn't really want to because one of them recommended me a book that's three books into this like universe and I'm not really in the mood to reread the first book right now even though I really liked it so I'm gonna reread no, I'm going to read this for the first time because I was just watching one of her vlogs 
where she read this. And I was like, I want to get to this. So that's going to be the switch out there. At first I was like, I hope that's okay. Probably doesn't even care. Also, it doesn't matter. But then I got, we're sleeping girls lie. Ace of Spades was one of the best books that I read the year that it came out. I love it so much. And I'm so excited for this next book. Like, just look at that cover. Just look at it. It is a YA fiction. And I don't know a whole lot about it. It does seem to have a school setting. And I'm not going to read anything more about it because I want to just dive in. And I'm kind of in the mood for that kind of book right now. So the time may be nay. But let us see what is in these packages because I really don't know. Where is my knife? All right, well, that was just about unhelpful. I need to sharpen it. And I'm not fixing to do that now, so. Let's just open her up the old fashioned way. All right, let's break that box. Ah! I'm so excited for this book, you guys. Bless your heart. I can't believe they sent me this. This is like a finished copy and everything. But it's a southern... Ooh. Is it like a thriller? A crackling mystery horror novel that has southern charm with a bite. This makes me very excited. First of all, my favorite thing to say is bless your heart. Because bless your heart. It takes place in the 90s in Texas. Uh-huh. So, we're gonna... Put this on my little stack of books because I want to read that. I want to read that just about now. Hello. We have a cryptid in the house. Um. Laugh it. Love it. Oh my gosh. This is ridiculous. It looks like a dang frappuccino. It doesn't at all, actually. It doesn't, but it's cute. It matches me. Anywho, let's take a pit stop at my backpack, 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 backpack. Can you guess what's in the backpack? I don't know the words. Backpack, backpack. Let's do it. Let's make freaking, let's make fat and do it. <laughs> boo, boo, tomato, tomato, tomato. Lame, loser, best friend. Hi, bye. He said, not for free. Um, I am burning a Jackie yeah, Annette. Well, I'm not. It's just on one of those heater things. But I, uh, whoa, I am. I don't know. I'm freaking melting. I'm freaking heating <laughs> a candle, okay? I don't know what the words are. What are words? What is in a word? Vowels, hopefully. Are there any words with no vowels? Comment down below. Um, I am burning. <laughs> That's what we're gonna say, okay? 
a Jackie Anna candle from her, it's Forever Mood, but it's a subscription box. It's called Soap Opera. It is my favorite candle scent, I think, of all time because it smells literally like fresh laundry. It smells like when you're trying to get the laundry out of the dryer and you have to hold it up to your face because the basket's full of other clothes because it's never, it's never ready to be actually used. No one uses their laundry basket. If you do, you'll be immediately blocked. Don't tell me that. <laughs> and when you have it pushed in your face and you walk to the living room and you just, <sighs> yeah. Somehow I got on a weird side of Instagram rails. It is the side that's talking about how the solar eclipse is governmentally planned. Okay. Uh, it is also the second coming and Armageddon and something about the cell phone towers. Now, the cell phone towers in the line of totality might actually go down because it's the influx of people, but they're going to blame it on the 5D aliens. <laughs> or no, sorry, is it 5G? What letter goes after the 5? I don't know. I only know about some of this stuff in passing when Instagram Reels decides to bring it to my door. And then uh, when I listen to like Last Pod and they mention it on there. Typically Henry. And, you know, I will, I, one thing I'm going to do is listen. And I'm going to try to control my eyebrows because what in tarnation are we discussing? Um... Just found out what chemtrails are. So, I don't know. Instagram Reels does this to me every weekend. The weird stuff comes out. Things are afoot. Um, I do think the eclipse is going to be stressful, but solely because I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to go out there. <laughs> and it's going to be stressful to round up these children. But I don't know if it really means anything. You know what I'm using it for? To blame all my emotions on it. I'm like, oh, I'm so weepy. Must be the eclipse. <laughs> Literally not even starting yet. Um, this book, I am on page 87. And I am, the thing that I'm liking the most is that we're getting some emails. So I like the several mediums thing going on. Um, the turtle things is intense. I wish it was tortoises instead, but that's just me. What this one is about is two women. That's only the sentence. It's not a sentence. I have been having to help differentiate between fragment and complete sentences. And Frida wouldn't pass. Um, two women. An office filled with secrets. One terrible crime that can't be taken back. So someone's dead. Isn't that like the only one? Unless it's like plot twist. She's alive. <laughs> like, I guess so. Oh my god. What if it's Pet cemetery <laughs> Behind this office. Um... But there's two women. They work at a vitamin supplement company called Vixed. And Zorn is the one girl. And who's the other girl's name? Natalie. So Natalie and Zorn are cubicle mates. Well, they share a wall. And they were roommates. I don't know what the, you call that. Anyways, they share a wall. Don's kind of weird. Um... Uh, she seems fun to me. If you want to know about turtles, go to Dawn. And then Natalie seems weirder to me. <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> she seems weirder. Uh, this is definitely giving me the energy of like a popcorn thriller though. Because it's just very fast paced and whatever. Like where Natalie gets to the office. Apparently Dawn's super serious about her little schedule. And she is late. So Natalie rightfully normally goes, let's call the cops. Sorry, not gonna usually side with a man, but Seth, is that what his name was? I don't know. Whoever is the little bossy boss over here. He was like, um, hello. But then Dwan didn't show up for her meeting. And we were like, something's afoot. So as does happen in bad Lifetime movies, Natalie, <laughs> I don't know why I need to say their names like that. I don't. And I know someone out there hates that. Um... But Natalie, she goes to Dawn's house. And, oh, it's because Natalie <laughs> wouldn't stop mentioning that this man had a Boston accent. And I was like, get in the car. Uh, that's what she said, not me. I did repeat it, though. Uh, 
but Natalie goes to her freaking house to investigate, and it looks like something went bad. Something went wrong. And now I guess we're going to do something with that. I don't really know. Um, what I don't love so much is that Natalie's pretty, like, you know what I'm trying to say nicely? Natalie would be the kind of person I'd be saying, bless your heart, like, at least twice a week. You know? Because, uh, co-workers missing. I admire your spunk to go look for her. That's sweet. Um, but if you have to go around their yard to the back door, maybe it's because I live in the South and, like, that's also not safe to do. But I would never go around the back of someone's door to, like, their backyard and then enter their home because I'm a concerned coworker. I would go there and see, oh, her vehicle is here. Let me do, like, a wellness check. Let me call the cops where they can, like, actually go in there or something. You know? If we're living in Thriller World, that's what I would do. But I guess if we're really living in Thriller World, I would go through the front door with a battering ram. Because <laughs> that's what they do. I don't know. You have to suspend your disbelief, I guess. I just feel like... You know what I feel like? This is this is nothing on Frida because I enjoy her books. But I feel like in other thrillers I read, they try to have a more... Maybe it's because I, I'm just like a co-worker. Y'all don't talk. In fact, you're kind of mean to her. So what are, we, what are we doing here? It's for the plot. But you're not... This is not the Truman Show. You're not supposed to know there's a plot. Anyways, this is part of the issue with these books because you just it half the fun is being like what are you doing okay I'll go along with it but you don't really want to go along with it you know oh shoot <coughs> ow <coughs> I just choked on air <coughs> god that hurt oh no my whipped cream's melting <coughs> there's a lot happening um girl what I forgot to upload something for work so I gotta do that. Um, I will check in with you guys later though. Have a slay day. <laughs> wow, that was a very long-lasting stretch, buddy. Are you ready for breakfast? <gasps> or do... Do... <laughs> <laughs> The top of the Nespresso pots always taste so bad, but man, they look like they would taste so good. Like they look so, listen, you can't hear that. You just hear your ginger eating, but it looks so fluffy and like it would taste good, but it's a lie. It's a lie.
let's do a vibe check. Got my whiny boy here, but fresh set of clipped nails and his toy. Yeah, have this book right here. We're gonna sit and finish it. Got this cutie right here. She's mad. She had to go get a B12 shot and a little bit of, what are those things called? Ginger, do you remember? Oh, antibiotics. I'm having to translate ginger out of all of the uh, expletives. And I just tried to trick her into eating some of this like medicine the doctor gave her, but that didn't work as you can see. <laughs> but I love her so much. Uh, but yeah, she's mad at me. So cool. But hi, jump scare. Ooh, warning my face. Um, I am about to sit down and read for the night. I have prepared my den. Um, I want a den. I grew up in a place where like having a den meant like, so I want to have a den. That's my goal in life. Once I get a den, it's done. But right now my den is portable. It's actually this pillow thing, which by the way, so I went to go show someone on Instagram this pillow that I had and I saw that it was sold out and I was like, what do you mean? The people need to know about the pillow. <laughs> and it's like a little bit of an investment, not gonna lie. I mean, to me it was. It's 60 bucks. And sometimes I hate things, so I get nervous. But you can always return it. Uh, but it came vacuum sealed and stuff, and I was like, how do I redo that dream? Didn't have to, because I love it. But um, I love the pockets the most. But I am charging my headphones right here, because I have a couple YouTube videos I want to watch. Shaughnessy just dropped a two hour and 45 minute video when I tell you she's speaking the language of my heart. I am about to watch that while I read The Coworker. This is the thing, when I'm reading popcorn thrillers like this, I actually enjoy watching reading vlogs in the background, especially of people who talk a lot like me, um, cause I think those are the best people. <laughs> and uh, it feels like I'm like with a with a friend who we're like chatting and reading at the same time except that would not work in real life because I would have things to say but I can't say anything back so it works you know so I'll link it down below if you'd like to check her out I already have I'm sure you already know her love her if not homework assignment for the weekend but speaking of the weekend it's a long weekend okay so I have my trusty Stanley. I don't know what that noise is, but so help me when I find it, I'm going to end it. Um, I have my Stanley full of ice cold water. Um, and then I have two single decaf Nespresso pods put into this little mug and it's got some foam I burnt the hell out of, but it's okay. We're here for the vibes, not the perfectness. So what my goal is, is to finish this one Hear ye, hear ye. I am on page 204 of 358. So, what is that? 154 pages. <laughs> Stop. And I'm like really good at everything, like math included. <laughs> um, and then I want to read my next book that is on my... TBR, and this is next on my TBR because, first of all, El Casamano recommended it. <sighs> so, duh. But second of all, it is due soon, <laughs> so I gotta get on it. And Taylor Jenkins Reid blurbed it. Seven Husbands, one of my favorite books of all time. Carrie Soto. I put, I really, do you guys attach emotions and like when you're reading books to the books you're reading? Do y'all do that too? Because Carrie Soto is about tennis. It's a tennis player who is like renowned, great, show-stopping, amazing, and she retired and then she came back out of retirement to defend her like streak that she had with how many wins she had. And tennis always reminds me of summer with my mom visiting my Mima and we watch tennis and that's like all we do all day. And honestly, it's amazing because we start it with coffee, end it with wine. I don't drink wine because they only drink red wine and I hate red wine because it tastes like <sighs> that's exactly what it tastes like. The taste of red wine tastes like, <sighs> like that action. <laughs> I hate it. Um, so I, I don't dabble in that. But I have another coffee at night because I 
choose chaos. So uh, our TV in the living room is acting very annoying and not working is the part that's really annoying me. You know, that silly little part of something working. Uh, and I'm thinking about getting a new one. I'm gonna look for some sales because I don't really buy televisions. But I like to watch tennis on television. And y'all, tennis is coming up, it's in the summer. Actually, it's starting soon. When is it? Um, I'll look that up on my own time. You guys don't really need to be in on that situation. Uh, sorry, Jake is whining and freaking out behind you. I don't know what this book is about. I'm debating doing a reading vlog of like my favorite author recommending books, but ooh, stop. I actually might do that of like my favorite authors recommend me books. Do you think Riley Sager would acknowledge me? <laughs> Probably not, but let's try. Oh, what if I get a signed book of his new book and in the thing I say, my name is Olivia, but that's not the dedication. Recommend me a book. <laughs> He's going to be like this book that you bought, dummy. Uh, but I, I want to do that video. I think El Casamano would re uh, reply. I guess I could like email their actual business emails. Ooh, I have to be so formal. Hello, dear sir. I'm writing to you in hopes that you throw me a bone, if you will. Um, mm, I hate that already. I'm gonna do it though. Ah! Comment down below. I won't do it yet. I'll wait till you guys tell me which authors you think I should do. I want to do El Casamano, Riley Saker. Do we think? No. Dan Brown. No. That's a dream. Greg Hurwitz, though. Orphan X author? Mayhaps we could swing upon that. That sounded weird, but maybe we could. Um, do you think Deanna Rayborn would have... She would probably have, like, such good recs. Oh, my God. Much to do. Talia Hibbert? No, she's too famous. Alyssa Cole? Oh, she has a new thriller coming out. Can I just recommend that to myself? I think... Do you think Alyssa Cole would... Recognize... No, she... Look, would she even, like, look... Would she recommend me something? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Anyways, let me know some authors that you think I should do that with. That Hopefully that I've read. If you're new and you don't know what I've read, then just recommend a bunch because probably read it. Um, that's it. That's the plan. We have sprints tomorrow for Patreon with Mel for Lou Phantasma, which is our co-hosted book club over there. And we are doing sprints starting at 9 a.m. because it is a long weekend, like I said, because of tomorrow's Good Friday and Sunday, I assume is, if I do the math on those happenings at that time, um, I think Sunday's weekend. I'm not a true Southerner, I don't know what to tell you. Um, anyways, I, oh! I started the new Misfortune book as well. Beads and <laughs> bullets, I think it is. I love that series so much. The, it's just all chaotic. Speaking of Southern, um, that's the next one that I'm listening to on the audio book front. I just love a cozy mystery at all times. It's just good for you. It is. Actually, it's so weird. I literally talked to a minorologist about it the other day, and she's like, actually, yeah, I, I you know, subscribe. Nope. Mm -mm. Dang. It's hard to keep the lie up when you can't speak well. She prescribed it for me, though. There we go. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's all I have left for you. So let's go ahead and get starting on the party for the the vlog watching. Ginger is looking at me with the most, but it's okay. Cause we're just trying to make her feel better and healthier. Right, little one? Right, you look so pretty. Have you been using Tatcha too? <gasps> you use a retinol? Girl, that's why people don't believe me when I say that you're 19. That's also because it might not be true. <laughs> um, spoiler alert. She might not be 19. She's between 17 and 19. I'm pretty sure though on her medications, the doctor puts 2007. So, yeah. She is old. But she is beautiful. She really is. Wow. Okay. Let's shut up. <laughs> I don't 
mean to be as cool as I am. But like, this setup. Oh, ooh, really pale knees. Dang, those were really pale. What's going on down there? <laughs> it's fine. It's um, literally my skin tone. I love that this is actually tanner than my little my little kneecaps. Um, we're gonna go ahead get this game going. First of all, yeah, I know this is a great angle. Thank you. You know what I look like? Have you seen Beetlejuice? <laughs> that little lady who is in the wheelchair, it, um, well, is that what I'm thinking about? Or am I thinking about Spongebob? Also a little old lady who is sitting in a wheelchair in the scene. No, I'm thinking of Beetlejuice. Pretty sure, like, that person, like, has, you know, the little... <sighs> Anyways, I'm on page 232, and I just want to say, Natalie, I'm not upset, but whatever happens to her, Karma shows the best option. Um, she sucks, but also, Miss Frida, this, like, isn't good. <laughs> but I can't put it down. So, is it good? What's our definition of good? I don't know. Mine is, like, this is a good, quick read, but I don't think it's, like, I'm not putting up her book next to, like, you know, the new couple in 5B or a Miss Lisa Jewel book. Not even The House Across the Lake. Like, not even Survive the Night. <laughs> but it is actually maybe Survive the Night. It's very um, chaotic. Doesn't really make sense. But just follow the author. Don't look back at the plot holes. Just follow the author. I just... What is occurring right now, I feel like, and this is not, huh, maybe this is a mild spoiler for this book. Maybe. If I'm right, it is, but if I'm not, it's not. Maybe I just won't tell you if I was right or not. I don't know. I don't have anything to base this on other than when I go into thrillers, what I like to do is be like, what's the most wild reaction this could be? What is the most crazy, chaotic option we have and uh that sucks because sometimes I'm right but I like when I'm right but I don't know how I'm gonna be right so I wouldn't mind if it if it's that I don't think it's gonna be that though I just don't think I don't know I don't know what this ending is gonna be it was the the ending in the housemaid here's the thing the ending in the housemaid was good but it went on too long that's a huge thing I have is I think a lot of even bad thriller endings would be made better if they were quicker. Like, breakneck speed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, whoosh, whiplash induced. Um, I just, I really think thrillers, and as of late, I've noticed they drag it out for far longer than they need to. So, anyways, a little warning to look away to, uh, yeah, you could look away and then I'll just, like, put it up on the screen. How about that? I think this is going to end exactly like three, two, one. Yeah. Okay, it's off the screen now. Um, I think that that's what's going to happen. Because that would be crazy. What is that noise? It sounds like when I plug my watch in. But my watch is on my wrist. Also, my camera's about to die. What are y'all at? You're at 23%. Stick around. Come on. We gotta finish the book. Wow. Oh, warning. The hair's looking crazy. Um, I have a snoring ginger right behind the camera, so enjoy. I just finished The Coworker by Frieda McFadden. As you saw, we put it on the shelf. And um, I gave it three stars. It was a good fun time. There was one character that I was like, yeah, no, 
No, no, no, but they're right though. <laughs> Till the end. Um, I don't really have anything else to say that I haven't already said about it. It was very much, thank you, Ginger. It was very much like a popcorn thriller. It was not too deep. It wasn't very hard to follow. It wasn't, you know, anything groundbreaking or anything like that. And I don't think that I could read multiple of her books in a row because I feel like she is a fairly formulaic um, author to me. But with that being said, I do have The Inmate and Never Lie put on hold at the library so when those get in I will be reading them and trying them out seeing if I like those ones um but it, she's just been like a fun quick read thriller like almost palette cleanser author for me and I've enjoyed it this month has been so thrillery like I'm looking at my wrap-up shelf that I have right now and it is a epic fantasy a thriller, a thriller, a thriller, a thriller, <laughs> a romance, gothic historical fiction, thriller, thriller. Oh my gosh. So nine books. Not bad. But I did also bring this down and we're going to get started on this guy. This one came out last year and I don't know anything about it other than when I was at the El Casamano signing, she recommended it and I added it to my goodreads right away i think there were other there was another book that she recommended oh i think it's the people die every time i go on vacation or something like that let me see i got an arc of it from that galley i was like did you guys listen to me at the signing um i have assassins anonymous i have a lot of arcs actually oh wait hold on ow that was my leg Let's check in. Um, it's not Nerd Golly, it's Net Golly. <laughs> Thank you. What are you doing? You know what I really want? I want a thriller that's going to freak me out. Despite the fact that I didn't end up liking some of the commentary within it and I did not enjoy the ending, Hidden Pictures by Mr. Jason freaked me out when I was reading it. And I would like to find another thriller that's going to freak me out. Maybe I need to go read the Simone St. James. Even though I have so many library books to read and I should probably not do that. Um, but I have So Thirsty by Rachel Harrison. The Serial Killer Guide to San Francisco, which is a cozy. Assassin's Anonymous, I assume cozy adjacent. An Enchanting Case of Spirits. That's probably a witch romance, which tends to be my favorite kind of romance. Not going to lie. Then I have Nosy Neighbors, which is a cozy mystery and I think it features an older main character and then Darling Girls is you know the new Sally <laughs> Whoa. but then I also have that copy of Bless Your Heart do I want something fun like that I don't know I don't know what I want to do tomorrow during the sprints I'm definitely going to dedicate those to reading Tress as much as possible but for now, I do kind of want to start my, like, other book that I'm going to be reading in between. So I suppose it will be this guy. Since this is due back April 10th, I think. Technically, I'm ahead of stuff, but still. Still. <laughs> The beginning is Thelma and Luis. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna be obsessed. Oh, this is about to be so, that first line. Oh, okay. Oh, okay.
so we are currently on the first sprint on patreon good morning i've had my first coffee we're probably gonna make a second one jake is a little annoyed that we're in here for so long so we're gonna take him out in a sec but i've decided that i'm gonna work on my planner journal situation and i set up the printer to print some stuff and yes i think i'm going to focus on today being more about my reading vlog for patreon for tress so i have the audio pulled up i have a little spring asmr room and i'm going to read this i'm on page 47 still so hopefully i'll get lots done but this is the shop that I got this from. But you can get a custom bookmark. And I got this one. Which I think looks so cute. I put Cozy Cafe Book Club. Um, you can put whatever book club you want. But I did obviously Cozy Cafe. Because that is what the Patreon book club is called. And then last night I did read just the first chapter of this. And it's really cute. I definitely think it is going to be a book that is going to be one that I like. But again, like I said, only read like maybe three pages of it because the first chapter was short and that always is a win for me but I do want to focus on this so I can get this done I think I'm going to keep with the audiobook too so that I can do this I'm also going to do my book journal I started a new book journal I'll probably show y'all too but I'm going to show in the trust blog like updating it and talking about it and stuff and we have to take the enclosure my partner built for Annabeth out to the backyard as well, which I am weak like muffin. So we'll see how that goes, but could be great, could be bad. Um, aside from that, I am going to go probably go take my medicine really quick. Let Jake OUT, see if we want to move that thing out there, get it over with and grab my book journal because I got to do that. Hi guys. So we're having a little change of plans and I'm so excited. First of all, it feels like heaven outside. I'm so happy right now. I could literally cry, but that's a waste of time. So we're not. Um, I am changing because I need to get out of like my nice clothes because I am about to go out there and build Annabeth's little enclosure situation thing. Um, I got a bunch of stuff in from my orders that I've been placing for it to like decorate it. We have a beautiful lavender plant I am so excited to put in. Like I am just living, laughing, and loving. I'm wearing purple, so I'm gonna bring out my purple set. This is a sports bra and then I think I'll probably just like wear an old t-shirt um, cause it's gonna get, it's gonna get nasty. But I'm gonna show you guys when we get out there cause I'm, I'm so excited. It's gonna look so good. Okay, so I think I'm gonna put on a little hat as well just to protect my scalp. Because when I tell y'all, you probably like already know this, but I burn so easily because, well, I suppose I can blame that on my ancestors. And also, I mean, sun rays. I have my new shoes I got, so we will wear those. Let's throw on some socks. And we're going to go out there. I'm going to show you, once we get the thing down, I'll show you that. We're gonna put a bunch of dirt in there. We have a ton of topsoil, which is her favorite and the best for a Russian tortoise. Y'all are getting a zoology little dissertation right now. Hope you're ready. Um, but that's the best for her because Russian tortoises burrow when it's too hot or when it's too cold. And um, yeah, I'm gonna go get all that fixated. And then I have some plants. Two of them I do think did not make it. But we got a lavender, another lavender that's a baby one for shade. And then I have a couple grass plants. I don't know if they are alive, so I'm going to have to cut them down, like, to the head of them. Plant one of them because I think they're still, it's still kicking. 
but the other one I think is gone. So I'll have to order more of those, but those are pretty cheap online. So that'll be okay. But I am excited. Yes, I am. I am. <laughs> I love, I'm bad at it, but I really love gardening. Um, but I can only really keep alive stuff for Annabeth, so yeah. Okay, first order of business is to get all of these tiles up and move them so we can put this guy down. Okay, so I have got all the slabs up. We have them here and around and I am going to, there's like some random weeds growing in there, which she does eat weeds, but I don't know what they are. So I'm going to dig up the roots of those and then we will put this laying down and then we will get started. Another exciting update. My bird feeder I have right here, right by Ginger's bed. The birds are coming to it. Spring is sprung. <laughs> Okay, y'all, so we're taking the first break. As you saw, we've got the liquid IV going in. I have just updated my Tress of the Emerald Sea reading vlog because I'm filming that for Patreon in tandem. And that's the book that I'm listening to while I'm doing everything. So what I got done out there is I dug up all of the stones that we had in there. They're not stones, they're like a big old thing. I can't remember, tiles, stone tiles. Um, dug all those up, moved them. Then I leveled the ground as much as I could. This is not really the most important part. And then I put them back down enough so that there's not enough space for her to dig past them. And then I'm taking a break to drink this liquid IV, eat something really fast. It's 12.010 and I have like 12 minutes so I could get 12.010. Nope, 12.08. Cool. I have 10 minutes so that I can go eat something really quick. And then I'm going to go back out and empty all the bags of soil out there. And then... After that, we'll be kind of arranging all the things, all the stuff that I got her. So I will do like a little Annabeth haul, a tortoise haul for you guys to show you all the stuff that I got. I'm excited, but the enclosure that we got is lower. It's not as deep as the last one. So I am going to have to think of something to do for that so that she can't climb up out of it because Russian tortoises are very good climbers. They are known as the escape artists of the tortoise world. So, of course, because all my children seem to have that. And, and Jake and Ginger were out there with me and it was so nice. I love to have the back door open and just have them running in and out of the house while I'm doing something outside. But Ginger ate some freaking grass and then she threw up. And now she's like, well, I don't want to eat. My stomach hurts. And I'm like, and what do you think led us to this place that we're growing at, girl? A mess. She's a mess. And then she came over and she's like, oh, I want to eat. And then I put her food down and she's like, mm. And then walks away. I don't even know. Teenagers, truly. A geriatric teenager. It's too much. Um, but let me go make my little toasty. And then we will do the bags of dirt and then we will do a little, a little tortoise haul. I think I may, I may look at after the dirt to see if I need to get like some, just some two by fours and just put them along as like a little lip almost just to make it a little bit more challenging for her to get out because I don't trust her. I just don't. 
And because we got her a little house that she is going to go in every night and sleep in, um, we don't need to put a lid on it because of where it is in conjunction with the house. And then she's going to have a bunch of grass plants. So she'll have a lot of hiding room and a bunch of digs. So she doesn't need the lid as much because she won't be exposed at night to like possums and mainly raccoons. We don't really have raccoons, but possums is what we have. They don't really care. We have that baby possum that couldn't have cared less, just wanted the shade. So I'm not worried about that, but she is going to have a little house that she goes into at night that is like locked up and she can't get out of, um, for her safety. Will she be mad? Absolutely. Will I care? Absolutely not. Like go to your room, go to bed. I love you so much. See you in the morning with lettuce. Like that's going to be the, the routine, but we'll see. We'll see if I have to go make a route run to Lowe's. I don't really want to do that though. So, <laughs> oh, I actually have, you know, this is so random. I am a dad in my head because we got rid of our old bed frame and you know, those wood pieces, cause it was a little bit was broken. Like we were, we didn't put it up for, to sell it or for someone to come grab it. We just put it out for a bulk day and, um, it had a bunch of those wood slats, you know, that the mattress rests on. And I was like, I could use that. Oh, I, I, I'm gonna find me something to use that for. Oh, yo, yes I am. And, uh, not to say that like it was worth saving those for two years, but. I hate going to Lowe's, especially to get wood. So honestly, us dads, we know what we're doing. We know what we're doing. <laughs> All right, y'all. I just finished with our little chatty portion of the sprint. I have almost drank all the water. I think it's like melted ice at this point. And I'm going to keep reading this guy, but we are going to go put the shoes back on. Oh, look how beautiful and colorful this looks. Oh, it's so cute. Um, we're gonna go, we're gonna go put some dirt out there. All right, all right. I'm so tired, so a latte was needed. I have to go pick up a Home Depot order because our freaking hose wasn't working. So I couldn't finish the thing yesterday, but now we're going to go to Home Depot like the true father I am. <laughs> and get that. And we're going to go to Dutch Bros. Just to stay true to who I am. Look at this beautiful crema. I'm a barista.
didn't work. Love that. It's a little quieter, I guess. Um, I am about to make a coffee for the afternoon because I'm doing sprints over on Patreon again today. So I'm gonna have the espresso machine turned on, got some beans in there. I'm gonna make a coffee. I just finished the rough cut edits for the 24 hour vlog. I did a little bit of the ones for this vlog. And then I have my Tress of the Emerald Sea Patreon vlog and then my Shaken Espresso exclusive vlog. Those two I need to go through and do edits on. So I'm gonna maybe try to find an audiobook to listen to, but also I may just let myself watch YouTube videos and have kind of a brain break from reading and then jump back into reading once I'm done with them because that's kind of what I like to do is go between the two. You know, I don't like to always be reading because then I start to not like it as much if you're always doing it, you know what I mean? So anyways, we're going to use my very fitting coffee cup because this is still very applicable to today and yes. Hey guys, I am on sprints right now and I am actually about to organize <laughs> these and I just wanted to show you guys because my cords are always all over the place and I have a ton of cords because I like all these cool little like technology thingies and they all got a freaking cord. So I found these little guys on Amazon and I have talked about them before but they are coming in for the rescue once more and it's making my little desk that I showed you guys I set up from Flexi Spot. It has a very big drawer, but it's like one drawer, it's shallow, which is good because it makes me have to like choose what's really in there. And so it ends up being stuff I actually need, but it is, is not conducive to having a bunch of these cords just all over the dang place. So I'm having to actually keep up and organize them and it's working out so well. Like these work out genuinely perfectly. Um, this one is huge because like, I mean, it's just thick because this is my um, external hard drive cord. So we're just going to fold her a one time, but I just wanted to show these because I don't know about you guys. But every time I buy something, there's another cord to include. So, like, look at this. Like, just just look at it. Look how much nicer this looks. With, like, the three cords. Just boop. Right there. Boop. Right there. Okay, so now... Alright, now I do have a little confession to make. I am almost done editing the Trust vlog. Cool. Then I will edit the Espresso exclusive vlog. And then I'll be done. Cool, cool, cool. Um... I am just full out making this a work day. No rest for the wicked vibe. <laughs> just a work day. And uh, my partner did go to grab the Home Depot order. Because, I mean, they're an angel. And it's the curbside is now open. So, Dutch Bros is on the way home. That was also offered. And it was accepted. So, we are getting a little annihilator. I tried adding in hazelnut and white mocha. We're going to see how that tastes. Hopefully it's not awful. And I'm going to get this work done. And then we are going to be working on the reading journal. So I should go through what this even is. Um, I have, well, first of all, if you are interested, because I think that this is a beautiful journal. This is the shop I got it from. But this is what the front looks like. And that I just feel like that's a very me thing. Like, that just makes sense that that's the journal I would have. And then I ordered a package from a journaling shop. And this is the freaking way she set it up with my name and everything. 
So I just cut that out and used it. So we can see my past failures. In 2022, I tried to make this happen. I did not. Um, I have a space here to make the 2023 top reads. Space here for the 2024 top reads. Let's see. Okay, that's it. Apparently, I think I'm only going to get to 2024 in here. I think I'm going to be able to fit 2025, but that's okay. Uh, I have my 2023 little library. I have not made that for 2024 because it's just not really my priority, but this is what I'm doing. So I'm making a two page spread for the books that are four and five stars. It's all five stars and six stars, obviously get one, but the four stars, typically it's 4.5 or just ones that I have a lot of feelings on. So that's the hunting moon, all of us villains. I did September house and I thought I could draw. And then I was quickly humbled and reminded that I indeed cannot. But she's staying. Then I have Hail Mary. Look at this man. Isn't that the funniest drawing of a man you've ever seen? I'm keeping it in there because I made myself giggle. Because I was like, wow, he's got a flat back. <laughs> like, it's just... Sunk. It doesn't even look like a human. Um, Bride. The Final Strife. First Lie Wins. The New Couple in 5B was actually the book that solidified I wanted to make this dream happen for me. And now I have a, probably a few more books I need to add to this. But what I want to do is use my little Canon selfie printer to print out my books, covers, and do that. Now, what is the confession, you ask? Oh, I'll tell you. Um, I bought an April Start Hobonichi Cousin. Yeah, um, that is the only version of Pobonichi that I have finished. And I also was convinced because I saw someone else say the same thing on Instagram. And that's what made me think about doing it. But I like the Hobonichi to be one year together. I was attempting to do the year split in two. And it's just not working. I just don't like it. I don't like the colors of the cover, which seems silly to like that to be a factor. But I won't use it if I don't like it. So there is that. And I just, I, I, I just, I just, okay. I just, so we now are going to have this guy and my new Hobonichi coming tomorrow and it's right in time for April to set it up. And after my dentist appointment on Wednesday, I am going to be grumpy and I anticipate I'm going to have to get this thing redone. So my other thing though, that I looked up because yeah, Hey, anytime I have a problem, I'm going to Google the symptoms. Is that the best idea? No, no, it's not, but I'm going to do it. So I did it. And turns out that maybe it could have just been a really deep filling. So that's why it still kind of has a little bit of pain because the only time that it hurts is when I bite directly on it on something that's hard or I like have a really, really cold water go directly onto it. But even then that cold water is like a hit or miss. It's not actually happening as much anymore. It was like a week after I got it, but it's really not happening anymore. So I'm starting to think that maybe it was a combo of it being a deep filling and then maybe it's just not filed down as much as it needs to be. I'm really hoping that's it because I don't want to get numb again. I hate it. I hate the feeling of the laughing gas. I really do, um, only because it just makes me feel like, ugh, for like two or three hours afterwards, and I just don't want that. I just don't want that in my life, you know? I just want to chill. But I, I also have gotten a lot of work done. Like, my first bridges I got done with only a little numbing cream, I would argue not enough, and seven shots directly to the old mouth. So, I don't like that one either. I would rather have the laughing gas and be hallucinating Stormlight Archive as I listen to my little Spotify playlist of the Stormlight Archive books. Soundtracks. <laughs> Which is absolutely what I do every time. Stormlight Archive is a comfort series to me in a way that nothing else is. Like, I cannot explain it to you. But I am really debating picking up Oathbringer. I think what I'm going to do is pause the library holds. I know. Alert the presses. And then I'm going to finish the ones that I have. There you go. There's that caveat. And if any new releases come in, what am I to say no to? <laughs> I'm not going to request anymore. I'll put it on my little list that my library lets you make. 
and then I'll like full request after I finish Oathbringer because I am like a fifth of the way through that book. That's crazy. I'm three. I'm I'm three hundred pages in, and I think it's thirteen, fourteen hundred pages. So yeah. <sighs> Anyways, I am going to get back to editing the sprinting, all the things, and I will check in with you guys when I am doing this. Maybe we'll do some b-roll of that. I don't know. It's kind of a vibe, but I found some more classical music that I think y'all would like, so let's roll it now. Okay, we're gonna redo the b-roll clip with the coffee that's actually good and not whatever the heck I tried to make. This is an iced annihilator with oat milk, white mocha, and hazelnut added. Do it. This is the new drink. my last little bit I've decided to make a new releases spread as well so it's not just new releases though because these this ones and this one are like the recent so it's like new slash recent releases it's gonna be my spread so we will maybe plan that one out as well but let me finish cutting this one. Is what I've done for the night. I just put some books here. I wrote them down, did a little bit of that, and then I'm either gonna journal here or I'll write like the ratings maybe. I'm not really sure, but I think it looks really cute. There's a very rude peanut gallery among us. Watch out, the haters are everywhere. Oh, look at that forehead. Um, I'm bringing my book and we gotta go get groceries. That feels deliberate, doesn't it? Yeah, it does.
put the food here. It's quite quite a different size actually. Let's put it there. That'll be better. Um so if anyone can give me tips on these are this is a lavender plant from Central Market. This is a lavender plant I got online from a good it's like a good little garden store, but it is I think I may have watered it too much down in there. I spread it apart like this, by the way, just to check. But that one's kind of having some of the same, if you can see at like the base of it. I think I may be watering it too much. But if you look down there, you can see like there's new growth. So I don't think it's dead. I think it's just pissed. <laughs> but please give me advice, I need it. Are you ready, Anna Banana? Let me come around. Be sad. I figure you're probably gonna wanna go to the food first, but you can check it out. Hello guys, um, I have not really updated today because we were 
living. We were laughing. We were loving. And then I got a, a weather headache, which those are the worst for me. I've talked about those before. I know. Um, they absolutely suck. So I am suffering. But that's fine. I decided to pause on updating this journal because my spring start Hobonichi cousin got here. This is my preferred one. I already mentioned it. So what we're going to do is set up the week and the daily for tomorrow just to like help me stay on top of it. So these are the stickers for the weekly and then it's matching for the daily. So what I'll do is I'll lay it all down before the pen or anything like that and I'll show you guys and then I'll fill it out because I know I love to follow the planner girls who like post all their spreads and all that good stuff but I'll never be one of those I've just realized because I like to keep it a secret. It's not really a secret. I journal too much about like my feelings and stuff and I'm not gonna put that out there. You know what I mean? Like we don't need that. Um, actually, I do need to move this guy out of here because I'm gonna I'm gonna keep using this VDS cover. I did order a new cover from Etsy. It was like 30 bucks, which is a really good deal, and it's vegan leather, which I like. So I wanna see how that is and how I like that when it gets here. But I have um, the Coffee Monsters Co. is what I use for my, what are those things called? Wouldn't you like to know? I use it for my monthlies. And also, it, honestly, if she made enough weeklies that I could use her every single week, I would because her paper is my favorite and her color schemes, just everything is the best. But this is what the April spread looks like. And then I got these extras. And I just use this to kind of have an overview of the month, things that are happening, um, track some stuff. And I'm actually gonna start doing 30 day challenges. So this month, my challenge is to, when I get home, work at my desk for a little bit, at least to fill out my planner before I retire for the evening. And hopefully that will help me build up a good routine with that. We will see. But I may set that up. Maybe I'll set up the May calendar in the monthly reset video. Wouldn't that be so cute? Wouldn't that be so cute? But I think I am going to film the monthly reset video probably tomorrow after work. And I might do some sprints to help motivate me to do filming after work because I am always so ready to just like, I love the routine of getting home, lying in bed. Cause I'm like, yeah, I was productive today. I went to freaking work. That was productive for everyone. Can't believe it did that. Show stopping. Unbelievable. Um, but let's, let's do the sticker. Yes. Hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're 